about C4.5 algorithm and multivariate decision trees. My name is Thales Sam Korting. Here is me, my email and my home site. When we know the classes of an instance set, we can use a computer or an algorithm to discover the way that these attributes behave to estimate classes for new instance that can be similar to this one that we already have. One way to do this is through decision trees, DTs. Tree is either a leaf when the node is label, labeled with a class, or can be also a structure containing a test that is linked or connected to two or more nodes that we call subtrees. When we want to classify some instance, we have to get its attribute vector and apply this vector to the tree we reach to one of the leaves that will be the class to which this new instance belongs. A simple, simple example, just one attribute and three, two tests. Here are the leaves that we call the classes and here are the nodes that contain tests connected to two or more nodes. Here in this example n is 30, 30 is higher than 10, n is not higher than 100, so it comes to this side and it's classified as medium. If we have n attributes, in this case we have two attributes, we will have an n-dimensional space, in this case a two-dimensional, where the classes can be. And the DT will create hyperplans or partitions that are these lines here to divide the space to the classes. Now we're going to talk about the C4.5 algorithm that is based on a previous algorithm, ID3, that means iterative dichotomizer tree. The aim is to find small or simple decision trees based on some premises that if all cases belong to the same class, at this point the tree is a leaf and we label it and we label it with that class. And for each attribute, we calculate uh, the potential information provided by a test, executing a test on this attribute. The way to calculate the gain uses the entropy, that is a measure of the disorder of the data. Here, the entropy of an instance set. Here is the entropy of an instance set considering some class. And here is the gain considering an instance set and a class. The aim of this calculation is to maximize the, the gain when we divide the overall entropy, splitting this argument by this value. In this case, the pruning is done after the complete creation of the tree, and the aim is to reduce classification errors that are caused by specialization in the training set. The aim, the general aim is to make the tree more general. Now some results of this, this algorithm that is available on software Weka. at this address you can download it free. We consider some aspects of workers like vacation time, working hours and health plan and the result will, will be the, condition of the conditions of the work, good or bad. Here is a simple example of a decision tree and just consider it vacation and working hours. Here are the good cases and here are the bad cases that must have vacation below average and working hours higher than 39. Now we're going to talk about multivariate decision tree because they are able to generalize well when dealing with attributes correlation. That is not the case of univariate approach. The univariate approach was the case of C4.5 algorithm. And also in the univariate approach, the results are easy to the humans. We can understand the influence of each attribute to the whole process. A simple example to compare the univariate and multivariate approaches. Here we have an univariate approach that considers just one attribute per node, one, 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 and result at this tree or these hyperplans, as I had already said. And the multivariate approach makes just one test and classifies all the instances. 
look in that example, we can find a problem in the univariate approach that it tests some attributes more than once. And the solution from this multivariate approach is that it uses uh, more than one attribute in the test leaves. The multivariate approach is a linear combination of the attributes at each internal node. The tests are this in this way. We make a sum using weights and the attributes. Here the weights are a real value, a, a coefficients, and the attributes are the attributes that we have. And we use also an, a simple attribute one here, just like the bias at the neural nets approach. When we construct the tree, we have to find at the beginning the best test to split the data. We, we repeat this process to find more tests to split the data until some stop criteria is achieved. For example, some partition has just one class, is a good time to stop. And uh, an approach to make this construction is called linear machine. What is a linear machine? It's a set of discriminant functions, here are them, and has this form. We perform a sum with this weight vector and this attributes vector. At the first time, we can initialize this vector just with ones. And to say that some element belongs to class i, we can say that for all other discriminant functions, these functions is higher than all of them. To train a linear machine, we use the absolute correction rule, is one approach. We use these two weights, where i is the class to which the instance really belongs, and j is the class to which the linear machine made an incorrect classification. So, at each iteration, we we adjust these values according to these equations, where this constant c is calculated, as we can see here. So we start to update this weights vector in order to classify well all instances. Another approach is the thermal perceptron, that also uses a constant to update the, the weights vector, but is done at this way. Here we have different equations and the algorithm starts with this value of b and here is the stop criteria that if the linear machine is correct for everybody or this value of b, b is lower than a certain threshold we can stop but for all wrongs wrong classification we compute the correction c here update and we update this weights vector and adjust this value of b. The idea, as I already said, is to correct the weights vector until all instances become correct or a certain, num certain number of iteration is reached. And this number will be controlled by this equation that always decreases the value of b, as I already said. And planning these kind of decision trees, we have to consider two aspects that outliers prejudice the process because outliers make the, the tree a little bit specialist in the training set but at the other side sometimes we uh, the act of planning can result in more errors than uh, correction so we have to balance these two considerations generally we, we have uh, to extract just some attributes or features of the tests in te instead of running the whole node. This is in the multivariate approach. And at the theory, we can read that sometimes a multivariate test with n minus 1 features can be more general than one based on the whole set n set of features. Here is the bibliography of this work. And that's it. I thanks for your attention. Here is my email. If you have any doubts, you can send me an email and you can check my home site to see more documents like this. Thanks.